Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your 11th CSS tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about how to style unordered lists using CSS, which can be useful if you want to have your lists fit in with your website to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and it can also be useful for if you have uh, visually impaired visitors who are trying to view, for example, a navigation menu, which a lot of people make out of lists. Um, and a screen reader would, would uh, read through that as a list, so it would make it more, uh, more accessible to a user who may be visually impaired. So uh, let's get into it and uh, see what's going on here. So the first thing we have is just um, our page open in Safari, and it's just uh, CSS tutorial 11. And that's um, a header that we used in HTML, and we just centered that, so there's no CSS being used here. If we come over here to our code in Sublime Text 2, you'll notice that we uh, just have our centered header and a link to our style sheet, which is over here called styles.css, uh, and that is also empty. So let's go ahead and add a list so we can start styling it using CSS. So um, since this is a web development tutorial, we'll uh, create a list of web development related languages, I guess. So we'll say UL for unordered list, and then we'll close that. And within that, we're going to use our LI tag for list item. So we'll say HTML. CSS, JavaScript, and we'll say PHP, and we'll also say uh, MySQL. So let's save this, come over here to Safari, and take a look at what we have. So we have a pretty ordinary um, and kind of boring uh, unordered list in CSS, which we can tell is unordered because we have these bullet points here. Um, so just like text or links or anything like that, we can change the way that the list looks, including the way that the bullet points look, uh, by editing the CSS rules for the list. So for example, let's go ahead and change the color of the list um, by coming over here to Sublime Text 2, going to our styles.css, and we're going to select the UL, or use the element selector for the unordered list. Uh, and if you have more than one unordered list on your page, uh, just be wary that the uh, UL selector will change every unordered list on your page unless you use a class or uh, ID selector to override these rules. So uh, let's go ahead and change the color. So we'll say color and just like anything else we're just going to use a color. So let's just say red. And if we save this we'll come over here and refresh and you'll notice that we have our list uh, and is now red. And this also includes the bullet points here. So uh, when you change the color it's going to change everything. All the list items and the bullet points as well. So let's go ahead and change the font now just like you would for text or a link or something like that. So we'll say font family and what this is going to do is it's going to tell the browser to choose a font from this family of fonts. Uh, and you can specify more than one font if in, in the event that the browser, uh, for example, doesn't have that font, or your computer doesn't have that font, it'll go to the next font and the next font until eventually it just defaults back to the browser or computer's default font. Uh, so for this example, we're just going to specify one, which I know we have, uh, is Comic Sans MS. And notice that we have the quotation marks here. Uh, so let's just save this, come over here to our Safari, and we'll refresh. And you'll notice that now we have Comic Sans MS is our, is our font for our list, and the bullet points also got bigger um, because that's just what they look like in the Comic Sans MS font. So let's go ahead and take the color off here, just so we can, uh, actually let's take off both of these, just so we can concentrate on one thing at a time and not have to worry about everything changing. So let's refresh, and now we have our list back to normal. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to learn how to change the, the way that the bullet points look. So right now we just have these filled in uh, black circles, which is the default way the, the list looks in Safari anyway, and on most browsers as well. So we can actually change that to a couple different things, and you can actually change it to your own image if you'd like, but since I don't have any images on the computer right now that we can use as um, unordered lists, I would suggest you look that up on W3Schools or Tizag or another website that has CSS tutorials. So for the unordered list, we're going to go to list style type, and this is the CSS rule that we're going to be creating. So list-style-type and we're just going to specify uh, another style type for the list. So in this case, let's just say circle, which isn't going to change it too much, but you'll notice that if we save this, come over here to Safari and refresh, the circle is not filled in anymore, and instead it's hollow, I guess you could say. And that's just another way to change the way that the, the list looks. It looks kind of nice. And it's something a little bit different that you don't see all the time. So let's come back into Sublime, and we'll change this to, for example, square. Oop, and we'll save this. Sublime Text 2 adds the um, semicolon automatically, so sometimes it's hard to get used to. So if we refresh here, you'll notice that now we have, instead of circles, uh, squares. And this can be you know, useful for whatever you want to use it for. Those are the only two that I know of, and I'm pretty sure there aren't too much more that you can change by default. But if you go through, you can actually select images 
And again, if you head over to w3schools.org or just Google a tutorial for it, uh, you'll find a tutorial on how to do that. I don't have any small images that we can use for this, so I decided to omit that part in our tutorial. Another thing I want to talk about uh, is how we can actually take this list and make it horizontal rather than vertical. Um, so we can create a navigation head bar, which we could put, for example, under here. And then again, those who are visually impaired with, who are using screen readers um, could have the reader go through each item of the list. So for example, if this was home, about, uh, contact us, blog, or something like that, instead of going to the next thing under the list, it would just it would go through every item in the list, making it easier for those who may not be able to see the website as well to uh, access what we have. So let's come into Sublime Text 2 again, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to actually create a new rule for UL and then the LI. So we're going to be accessing the list items within the unordered list. And if you don't do this, I, I tried to do it without this and it didn't actually work. I'm not too sure why, but if you use the LI, that'll, that'll work. You can omit the, uh, the UL as well, but uh, we're just going to access the LI through the UL. So uh, what we're going to do over here is we're going to first select our list style type. We're going to say none. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to omit the... Um, the bullet points. So what, it's going to take that off so we just have an unordered list um, which just looks like text that's spaced out. So if we come back into Sublime Text 2, we'll come back into here and we're going to say list and we're going to say style position Oop. actually we're going to say display and we're going to say inline and what display inline is going to do is it's actually going to change the way that the list is displayed. Right now, um, it's not inline. Inline is going to display each um, list item uh, one after another. And this is the reason that you have to do it as uh, ULLI because we're, just, we're displaying the list items inline and not the whole actual list inline. So if we come over here and refresh, you'll notice that now we have our list items displayed inline. So we have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and MySQL all one after another. And this is what's called inline. So since you notice that there isn't that much space after it, we can go ahead and change that property as well. We can say, for example, padding, which we'll learn about in a couple tutorials from now, but padding is basically the space between uh, each item. So we can say padding, we'll say 10 pixels. So if we save this, come over here and refresh, you'll notice that now we have a little bit of space between them. And that's because this, this uh, CSS is 10 pixels away from the L and uh, HTML. And this is true for every item here. So if you add another thing after MySQL, it'll also be padded to 10 pixels. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and set the margin to 0 pixels for right now. And the margin is how far HTML is uh, for if we had a border around it, how far it would be from that or something like that. So uh, let's just refresh. And you notice nothing changes and it's not going to change in this instance, but uh, that's how you would go about doing that. And for right now, since we don't know how to use, uh, we haven't talked about divs rather, um, let's just go ahead and center this list. And we'll save it, come over here and refresh. And you'll notice that now we have uh, a list that's centered underneath this and we can change it, for example, to say, let's say home about contact us blog and form. So if we save this, come over here and refresh, you can see why uh, those who are visually impaired or those who may use screen readers will have an easier time using a list. Uh, you wouldn't actually know that this is even a list if you didn't uh, style it yourself. So if someone was using a screen reader, for example, it would go through and just say home, about, contact us, etc, etc. And that would make it easier for those who are visually impaired to see what's on the website instead of having to, you know, click around and see what, see what they have. So this is just how to go about styling unordered lists. There's um, a couple more things you can do, and you can look those up. Uh, but these are just some of the basics to get you started. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Or you can tweet me at twitter.com slash jamiemcg or twitter.com slash technicalcafe. And also, uh, don't forget about the Technical Cafe forums, technicalcafe.net, where you can go and talk to other users, and um, I'll be on there too as well. So again, thank you for watching, and have a great day.